Okay, so this activity is related to the thing which we have done. Things which we have done volume studies. Okay. Now you see uh, what you have to do as written here. So there are some terms or statements given. And for these terms and statements, you have to give me a question. Okay. So for example, let me give an example. Let's say if I ask you or if I tell you Dr. Unab. Okay. So Dr. Unab can be the answer for which question. Okay. And for one particular term or one particular statement, you can have multiple questions. For example, if I say Dr. Unab, then the question can be who is teaching you uh, uh, traffic engineering? The other question can be who is uh, uh, who is one of the teachers from Pakistan in the department? Or another question can be who is the worst teacher in the department? Or another question can be who is the guy you want to kill immediately? Okay, so there are multiple questions for a single statement. Okay, so even if one of you gives a question, other one can also try. Okay, so again, it will. Uh, I'm hoping we used to play this game when I was a kid, okay, and there was used to be a TV show as well on this particular game. So I hope it will be beneficial for you guys as well. Okay, the first question. What is it? Okay, uh, I I hope you can see my screen. Right. Can you see my screen? Okay. Okay, so you see the first point is volume, rate of flow, demand, and capacity. What can you ask me so that I will respond with these four terms? What can be the question which will require the answer in the form of these four terms. Tell me. If I copy it here, I think it would be easier for me to see. OK. Volume, rate of flow, demand, capacity. What can be the question which will require your answer with these four terms? Anyone? Just try again. Whatever you, whatever comes to your mind, that is all true because that is already we have done. No. Yes. Yes. Something like this. Yeah. So Khalil, you can see I'm asking for something like this. I'm not asking you to make a question out of these terms. I, I'm saying make a question which you can answer with these four terms. So like Ali has mentioned here, what is the critical parameters needed to carry out for the design for, uh, to carry out the design? OK, that is then you will give me, give me the answer in these in these four terms. The critical parameters which are required for design are volume, rate of flow, demand capacity. Anyone else wants to go have a go at it? Anyone else? Like I said, you can have multiple questions for the same answer. OK, I can give you another question. What are the important parameters related to uh, uh, volume? OK, what are the important parameters that are observed in the field related to number of vehicles? OK, so again, you would answer me with this, with these four terms. OK, so Ali, well done, well done. I'll move on to the next. It's a statement now. What are the kind of, OK, OK, uh, yeah. So this is statement is or can be the answer to which question? Variation on the basis of time and for any planned and unplanned events. Which variation I'm talking about? What did someone ask me? So I refer, replied with this statement. Anyone? Khalil, have another go. 
I know that you have understood. Hussain, Badr, So if you see what I have been doing with you guys since the last two activities, I'm trying to make you think how I feel when I'm required to make questions. Then I'm in the same dilemma as you guys. Yes, anyone? Anyone? Eman, Iman, Noor. Yeah, good, good one. How the demand varies. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, well done. And again, I can give you another uh, example. Uh, what are the possible sources sources of demand variation. OK, so it can vary on the basis of time or because of any planned or unplanned event. OK, sources of variation in uh, travel demand. Or how the demand varies, that's also fine. OK, OK. Okay, what did someone ask me? So I said assign observer to each lane. What was the question? Why did I say that? Again, if you want to take the help from the notes, I don't have I don't have any problem with that. You can keep the notes and slides in front of you. I don't mind. All of them are from lecture seven and from the topics which you have already covered. Mm, not quite there. Anyone else? Because on intersection, we don't always uh, assign observers to each lane. It's not always the case. Yeah, but it can be a rule. Okay, fine, fine, yeah. Someone asked you just uh, about the rule. How uh, the movements can be counted? OK, fine. OK, OK. Anyone else want, wants to give it a try? Badr, Rawan. When would you tell me to assign observers to each lane? So what should be the question, Hussain? What should be the question then? Give me the full statement. You are on the right track. Give me the full statement. Yeah. Mm. Mm. More like it. Yeah. OK, so these questions are correct. The, the one which came earlier, they are also correct. OK, how many observers are required in the intersection? Someone asks you. You give him a rule, assign observers to each lane, then let him worry about how many observers he needs. And uh, how movements can be counted? Again, valid question. Yeah, in that case, assign observer to each lane. How many observers are needed for major movements? Yes. Yeah, this, this is a point which I'm trying to make, and this is what Hussein has also uh, indicated here. If you have overused, meaning if you have uh, high volume rules, 
they have high volume loads and it's easier to assign observer. It should, it should be the case to assign observers to each name. So uh, again, it's my opinion, but as I said, other questions are also valid. Uh, how should we uh, assign observers for heavy uh, movement or heavy volume loads? Okay. Yes, again, my op opinion. The other questions are correct also. Calculate arrival volume. The next statement is calculate arrival volume. Somebody asked me something and I said, calculate arrival volume. When? What could be the question for that? What will you do in case of Q formation? Okay, that's good. That's good. Anyone else wants to have a go? Then you want to try. What is the expected volume? Fine. Okay. Okay, this can be a question. Okay, fine. Anyone else? I can give you a uh, example. Uh, what should I do uh, if the intersection is operating over capacity? Okay, or which volume should I count if if, if the intersection is operating over capacity? Okay, but the other questions are also correct. No problem. Okay, control counts. Control counts. Which question would require the answer control counts? And this is now from a, a very recent topic which we have covered last time. This would be pressure in your mind. What the major or point or major segment of an area called? OK, you can call it a major point. OK, fine, no problem. OK. Uh, location, OK, OK, yeah, yeah. That is as per the definition. Very good, very good. OK, the point, which location? Uh, what is the uh, term for the location where you are taking the count for the whole period of study? That is good, good. Another uh, question can be uh, from which location do you get the hourly trend or the trend of traffic in general? From which count did you get? Uh, do you get the hourly trend of traffic or the trend of traffic in general? That is also control count. Okay. Okay. Well done. Last thing, adjustment factor. Something which we did in the last lecture. So which question would require the answer adjustment factor? Yes, anyone? Muhammad? Noor? We just need to give it a try. Okay, there's there are no marks here, no grades here. Okay, that's good. Anyone else wants to give it a try? Ali? You say adjustment factor, anything which anything else which comes to your mind. Khalid, you want to add something? 
Okay. Number of vehicles in the hour divided by the total number of vehicles. Okay. Not total. Uh, it was uh, number of vehicles of the day divided by the average number of vehicles. Not total, average. Uh, factor you uh, used to adjust the study for each and the study. Okay, good, good. Okay, so Iman, just a little bit of correction. Uh, not total, average number of vehicles. And uh, factor used to adjust the study, adjust the count for each day in the study. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so we adjust the count to, day, to calculate the average count. Okay, so well done. Okay, thank you for participating. Let us move on now. So in this manner, we have uh, gone through a bit of a review as well. Here are the problems which we did last time. And I asked you that if you have any problems, you can let me know by completing the last example. Okay, nobody has contacted me, so I'm hoping everything is fine. Okay, now we come to the concept of VMT. VMT stands for Vehicle Miles Traveled. The full form VMT is Vehicle miles traveled. How do we get VMT? Take the volume of a segment and multiply with the length of the segment. That will give you VMT. Okay, volume multiplied by the length of the segment. What is the uh, use of VMT? It tells you the uh, importance of the highway. Importance of the highway. The highway or the segment. The segment or highway can be important because of two reasons. Either it is connecting more points, so that means the length will be higher, or it is and or it is serving more people. Then in that case, the volume would be higher. OK, so in any case, BMT will go higher. So BMT is a major of importance of the segment of the uh, highway or the highway itself, depending upon what length and volume you're taking. So for example, these are the eight hour counts uh, which are taken from one of the previous examples. Okay, the, the first example which we did actually. Okay, so eight hour counts for uh, all the segments, okay, all the links. And for the sake of convenience, they are saying all uh, 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 links had a length of 0.25 miles. So this is the VMT for each link or each, seg each segment. Okay, so how do they get it? Simple multiplication of the second column and the third column. You multiply these two and you get the VMT. And the units are, you can see, vehicle miles. Now, this can change if your uh, length is measured in kilometers. Okay, so VMT can be vehicle kilometers as well if you are uh, multiplying with the length in kilometers. Okay, so the units can change. Uh, and, and you can see it is mentioned that these counts are taken from the three day study from the first example which we did about the limited network. OK, so uh, you can see the, the, the VMT for each link. And then if you want the VMT for the entire segment, just add all of them. OK, simple addition will do. OK, uh, this is a diagram uh, which is uh, known as a network flow map. OK, network flow map. So it's a map of an area. OK, and you can see uh, it's basically a street map. Now, the only difference between a, a regular map and this map is the width of the streets. The width of the street is not as per their actual dimension. The width of the street is scaled according to the volume it is carrying. OK, so you can see Lafayette Street. OK, it's the same street. Actually, it may have the same width from start to end, but you can see this segment is shown with lesser width than this one. Why? Because of the volume. You can see the volumes are written here. On the streets themselves, you can see the volume. So this is street, Henry Street, has the same volume from start to end, 3400. So it has the same width. Okay. This route 60 has a very large volume, so you can see the width is very high as well. Okay. And you can see this particular street, Francis Street, at this segment has more volume, so more width, and then as the volume decreases, the width also decreases. Okay, so the difference between network flow map and a regular map is the width of the street. So the width of the street is scaled according to the 
volume. And you can see the scale is given here as well. So volume up to 2000 is shown with this width, volume up to 4000 is shown with this width, and so on. Okay. Now we move on to statewide counting program, which is basically an expansion of limited network study. In limited network study, our network was limited uh, by the impact by its impact on a particular facility. So if you have a road which is far from your uh, uh, facility, then you will not count volume in that road. OK, so that was the the the, the location of the facility was deciding which roads will be part of the network and which roads will not be part of the network. In a statewide counting program, the road network is the entire network which comes under your jurisdiction, the political boundary of your state. OK, so for example, if you're doing it for Bahrain, then all roads within Bahrain are part of your counting program. If you're doing it for a state in USA, then all, all roads which are part of the state will be uh, part of your counting program. OK, so most of the cases, a statewide counting program will have more uh, roads uh, in it, more segments in it. OK, and they are done. Another uh, difference between statewide counting program and limited network study is the frequency. A limited network study is done once on the request of the client. Okay, the client is doing something, some uh, improvement, or he's do doing some development, and he wants to see the effect on traffic, so he will do that study one time, or maybe twice. Okay, but the statewide counting programs are done repetitively and continuously. Okay, so every year you start your program, at the end of the year you finish it, and then uh, you start it again. Next year, you repeat the same exercise. OK, it's like everything else which the government do uh, does, right? They have to provide facilities for their uh, residents every year, right? OK, the you receive a bill of uh, water and property every month. OK, so like most of the government activities, statewide counting programs are also done repetitively. OK, so all the roads which are within the jurisdiction of the government will be part of the counting program and the counting program will continue throughout the year and next year it will start from the scratch. OK, now uh, the main aim of the statewide counting program is to find out AADT on all roads. AADT stands for Average Annual Daily Traffic. We have studied all that. OK, so on all segments of their roads, they are trying to find out ADT. OK, then uh, another objective of uh, statewide program is to find out variation in ADTs on these roads, on these segments. OK, now ADT stands for what? So ADT is average annual daily traffic. Then ADT stands for what? The A which I have taken, taken out, it stands for what? ADT, full form of ADT. AADT is average annual daily traffic. OK, AADT was average annual daily traffic. Average daily traffic annual has gone out. OK, good. Thank you. So ADT, average daily traffic. So within one year, you will have different months and different seasons. So they, uh, the government would also be interested in finding out how the traffic uh, changes between different months and seasons. OK. And the last thing they are trying to find out is vehicle miles traveled. OK, so which segments are more important, which segments are less important. OK, but the first thing which they have to do is within their uh, state, they have to classify the roads according to their functional type. OK, so arterials, locals, local roads, collectors, they divide the roads according or they uh, label the road according to their type. Then within each classification of the road, they will establish a network of control counts and coverage counts. And the rules are the same, which I have already told you, that each type of road must have uh, at least one control count and the remaining segments will become coverage counts. And that will also depend upon the land use 
So if you have a arterial in a residential area, at least one segment of that arterial in that area should be a control count. The others will become coverage counts and so on. Okay. So they will establish a network of control and coverage counts in similar types of highways and same areas. Okay. And obviously the area is white, so one control count will, will not work. Okay. You will have many different portions of the state and you will have a in each portion you will have a, a setup of control and coverage counts. Okay. Um, okay, I want to talk about that. Okay, basic guidelines uh, must every uh, two mile segment. Okay, so if a segment is less than two mile, still you can avoid it. Okay, that that will not become very important. But every two mile segment should become uh, either a control count or a coverage count, unless unless you feel the traffic on that segment is very low, which will uh, not happen uh, very frequently. Because if a, if a segment is two mile long, then at least some people will be using it. You can see ADT less than 1,000 vehicles per day. It's a very very low value. Okay, but if it happens, you can uh, avoid that segment. You can ignore that segment. You don't have to count on that segment. Okay. So the controller coverage counts which you are selecting, they are on segments which are having a length of two miles at least, and their ADT is expected to be more than 1,000 vehicles per day. Okay, uh, you need uh, uh, to find out uh, ADT on all coverage locations. Okay, so again, on coverage location, I'm not taking the full count. On control counts, I'm taking counts on multiple days, so ca calculating the average would be easier for me. But on coverage counts, the count will be taken for a portion of the study, and the end you have to calculate the ADT. Okay, the ratio of control to coverage count should be. 1 is to 20 and can go up to 1 is to 50 as well. Again, a question which I asked earlier as well in the previous class when we were discussing the same topic, uh, or it is given, I don't have to ask it. Uh, one control count can be sufficient for up to 50 coverage count locations. Okay, but the ratio should not go above that. Okay, one control count can go or can cover up to 50 control coverage count locations, but if you are having more than 50 points, then at least make one more coverage or one more control count. OK, so the ratio and it was if you remember uh, it was 1 is to 10 for limited network studies because our network is wider, so we are allowing more uh, flexibility. OK, uh, control count. Now control count locations are further subclassified into permanent major and minor control count locations, and this is only for statewide programs. For limited network studies, control count does not have any subclassification. For statewide programs, control counts can be permanent, major, or minor. Okay. And what does it mean? I will come back to it in the next slide. Coverage count locations must be observed for at least two hours. At least two hours. Okay. Uh, the optimum observation period for a control count, coverage count location is. Uh, one or two days. This is considered to be optimal. Less than one day is less than 24 hours. I mean, is not that suitable for our calculations. OK, our calculations will become more complicated. OK, so for a coverage count location, at least observe two hours, but that is minimum. We try to go over that. So optimum is at least observe full 24 hours or if possible, go up to 48 hours or even more if possible. These are some of the counting locations for statewide pro programs which were collected by a group of students who were doing senior design projects a project with me in 2015. Now the locations are from 2015. The group completed their project in 2017 or 18, I think. Okay, so you can see the sites are marked here: temporary sites, school sites, permanent sites. Okay, so temporary sites are like minor control points, uh, control counts. School sites are mainly on the intersections. School sites are mainly on the intersections. OK, you can search on the Internet about the full form of scoot, but it has something to do with the control of the signals. OK, and permanent sites are permanent sites. They have permanent counters there, and these counters are collecting data for uh, the entire year. OK, now uh, you, here you see the difference between major, minor and uh, yeah, permanent control count locations. 
Permanent control count locations are those locations where you have fixed detection equipment installed on the field. OK, so fixed detection means the data is collected for the entire year without any break. OK, so you have full 365 days of data. OK, continuous flow of volume for the entire year. Major control points and minor control points are uh, usually observed through portable equipments. OK, like pneumatic road tubes or maybe, uh, maybe drones or cameras. Okay. Major control count locations are done for every week in one in every month of the year. Not every week, one week in every month of the year. OK, so major control counts are taken for one week in every month of the year. OK, so the locations on which this is done are known as major control count locations. And minor control count locations are done for weekdays. Uh, in every season of the year. OK, so a set of five weekdays in every season of the year. You select which uh, five days you want to do, but these are normally five weekdays and you repeat this exercise in every season of the year. OK, so. Counts which are less than these values, they will automatically automatically become what? If uh, if on a point you are taking account so it can be either for the entire 365 days or for at least one week continuous or for at least five days continuous. So if I'm not taking a count even for five days continuously, then that count will become what? If a count is for less than five years, then that count will become what? If it is not a permanent control count or a major control count or minor control count, then it is what? Tell me. Only one thing is left. Which is what? Coverage count. OK, OK, so if a count is taken even for less than five continuous days, it becomes a coverage count. OK, so now it should be clear. OK, uh, so we have a data from a permanent control count location, so you can see uh, now, the, the important thing about this example is the. The arrangement of the data. And why the data is arranged in such a manner. Uh, you can see the data is given for each day of the week. OK, average count for each day of the week. So they have collected data for the entire year. OK, then from that data, they separated the data for all the Mondays and the Tuesdays and the Wednesdays and the Thursdays and so on. OK, then for each day of the week from the data which they have just uh, uh, segregated, they have calculated the average of each day of the week. They have calculated the average for each day of the week. So I have an average value for Monday, for Tuesday, for Wednesday, for Thursday and so on. OK, now if you want, so this is what they have done already. OK, so how did they do it? They had the data for the entire year. From that data, they separated the data for each day of the week. So they had whatever data they had for Mondays, they separated and Tuesdays and Wednesdays and so on. Then for each day, they took the total value divided by the number of those days. So if you have 52 Mondays in a year, they took the total of Mondays and divide by 52. If you had 53 Tuesdays in a year, you took the total of Tuesdays and divide by 53 and so on and so forth. So this is why this is how they have got the values for the second column. OK, then you take the total. OK, so this will be the total average for the entire week and you divide by seven, seven days of the week. You will get AADT for this point. OK, so this 1430 is the AADT for this point. So they took the total of the entire week. So all these values were added. OK, and then you got this. And then this divided by seven. Gave you 1430. So 1430 is the ADT for this point. Average annual daily traffic. OK, now what is the point of doing this work? Why did I, why did I separate the data for each day of the week? Because now using this data, I can calculate adjustment factor for each day of the week. I can calculate the adjustment factor for each day of the week. 
And as I have mentioned or as I was asked earlier, the adjustment factor is used to convert the traffic of any day or adjust the traffic of any day to the overall average. So if you have the adjustment factor for each day of the week, then you can convert the traffic of that day into the overall average. You can convert the traffic of Monday into ADT or Tuesday into ADT and so on and so forth. You just need to multiply by the adjustment factor. Okay. So like we calculated the adjustment factor for a limited network study, uh, the adjustment factor for uh, the statewide study is calculated in the same manner. You take the overall average. What is the overall average here? ADT and the traffic of that day, which is Monday or Tuesday or whatever. OK, so this is ADT by the average of that day. This will give you the adjustment factor of Monday. OK, and the same thing for Tuesday and so on. OK, so these adjustment factors are now there for you. You, you can you take traffic on any day of the week. And then you can use that value, multiply with the adjustment factor of that day. It will convert it to AADT. Okay, and this is why they have arranged the data in this manner. And if you plot the adjustment factors on a graph here, you can see it. Uh, so for each day of the week, you have a factor. Now, when the factor goes up, now remember the factor is calculated as AADT upon the average traffic of that day. So when the factor goes up, what does it tell me about the traffic on that day? For example, the highest factor is for Saturday. OK, so what would would you tell me about the traffic on Saturday? When the factor goes up, what does it indicate about the traffic of that day? Tell me. Or let me rephrase it. Uh, is the factor inversely proportional or directly proportional to the traffic of the day? Now you only have two answers, right? So is the factor inversely proportional to the traffic of the day or directly proportional to the traffic of the day? Yes. The one, okay. Inversely proportional, yeah, inversely proportional because you are dividing by the traffic. See, this is the traffic of the day. OK, so the factor is inversely proportional to it. So if the factor for Saturday is highest, that means the traffic on that day is the lowest and vice versa. The traffic on Monday is the highest, so the factor is the lowest. OK, in the same manner, you can calculate monthly adjustment factors monthly adjustment factors. So now you can see the traffic is given for each month of the year. Again, from a permanent control count location. OK, it's a permanent control count location. Otherwise, you would not have all the values, right? If it is a major or minor control count, then all the values are not possible. OK, only uh, on the uh, permanent control count location, all the values are taken. OK, so you can see the total traffic. Now, this is not average. OK, this total traffic for each day, each month of the year. OK, so if you add all these values, you will have the total traffic for the entire year, which is this value. OK, so the total for, for the entire year. Now, if you want to calculate AADT, then take the total value of the entire year divided by 365. This will give you AADT. OK, AADT is the average of the entire year, right? So this value divided by 365, number of days in the year, which will give you AADT for the entire year. OK, uh, now if you want to calculate ADT, average daily traffic for each month, then you take the traffic of that month and divide by number of days in the month. So what are these values? These are number of days in the month. OK, if you don't remember them, just go to the calendar and you can see how many days are there in the month. OK, and all months don't have 30 days. Keep it in mind. OK, not even the Islamic calendar. OK, so. Uh, each value will be divided by the corresponding number of days in the month and you will have ADT of that month. OK. Now, what am I doing here? Who will tell me what am I doing here? What is 797 and what is 640 here? OK. I, actually, it is written. Don't mind. OK. So uh, 797 is AADT, the overall average of the entire year, and ADT, 640 is the ADT for the month. OK. So now these are the adjustment factors for each month of the year. Adjustment factors for each month of the year. So again, 
what is the use of the adjustment factor? If I give you the average of that month, you can multiply with the adjustment factor, it will become ADT. That will be the entire year. Okay. So again, you can see the data can be manipulated in different ways to give you adjustment factors for month or for the day of the week. Okay. Uh, the calculations are very simple. You, if you have the concept in your mind, the calculation will not create any problem. Okay. So total traffic was given. I calculated ADT for each month. Using the total traffic, I calculated the total of the year, and then I divide by the number of days in the year. I got AADT. Then if you divide AADT with the ADT of the month, you will get the adjustment factor of that month. Okay. Same thing was done for the day of the week as well. And again, if you plot it, you will you can see which factors are higher or lower and you can see here the factor for february is the highest that means the traffic in february is the lowest it can be because of the number of days february has 28 days which is the lowest for any month and the lowest factor is for august okay and uh you know it can it, it is indicating that the traffic in that month was the highest OK, now take out your calculators. Let us do some calculations of ourselves. I don't think I can complete it today, but we can do some of it. OK, uh, so on this, this is a data from a point. On this point, they collected data maybe by two different parties. The data was collected by two different parties. Now they are trying to combine the data to calculate monthly and daily adjustment factors. Adjustment factors for each month of the year and each day of the week. OK. So one party collected data in the first week of four months of the year, January, April, July, and October, which you can see in the first table. Okay, so in the first table, the data is given for four weeks, and these weeks are the first weeks of January, April, July, and October. Then you see the data given for uh, each month of the year and taken in the third week of that month. So this is by the other party, by the other organization. Okay. So in, in practical life, when you are uh, dealing with government organizations, this can happen. Two different organizations of the government or two different uh, uh, consultants working for different projects may be collecting data on their own, and you can combine the data into a single uh, set of uh, uh, points, into a single uh, set, OK, so that we can use it later on. OK. Uh, so uh in the th in the in the but the, the data given by the second party is average of the third week of each month average of the third week of each month so each value is an average of seven each value in this table is an average of seven so they did not give me that the data for each day of that week instead they just did the averaging and then gave me the final value OK, and this often happens. So you have two data sets which are for different times and different horizons. OK, now first thing we need to calculate is the AADT. Whenever you are faced with these types of problems, the first thing you calculate is AADT because the remaining factors are dependent upon AADT. OK. OK, now for AADT, the, the calculation is very simple. Add all the data you have by the number of days for which the data is taken. All the data which you have divided by the number of days for which the data is taken. OK, the data which we have, you can see 28 days in the first table and these 12 values. But out of these 12 values, each value is for seven days. Each value is for seven days. OK, so each value because it's an average of seven days, so it is representing seven days. So each value from the second table will be multiplied by seven. And each value from the first table will be taken as it is because it is for a single day. OK, so now you will add all the values from the first table plus all the values in the second table multiplied by seven. OK, so can someone give me the total of the first table and then the second table? 
OK, add all the values as it is from the first table. From the second table, add each value. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, multiply each value with 7 and then add them. OK, why? Because each value is an average of 7 days. OK, so give me the total for the. First table and the, uh, the second table. For the second table, I told you, you take each value, multiply by 7 and then you add it with the other values. I know it will take time, so that's why I said you're not completed today. I'll just calculate A, D, T, and then you stop there. Two different answers. Twelve thousand seven hundred forty-eight thousand four hundred ninety. For the entire table, for the entire table. Okay, so I will just write this value: forty-eight thousand four hundred ninety. Okay, okay, that's great. Forty-eight thousand four hundred ninety plus second. 170800. I believe you have multiplied by 7. Okay, everybody is multiplied by 7. Okay. Now, divide by the number of days for which the data is taken. Okay, so the number of days from the first table are 28, 4 into 7. Okay, 4 weeks and each week 7 days. Okay, in the second table, uh, you have uh, 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 each value for 7 days and we have 12 months. Okay, so divide by Four into seven from the first table, number of days from the first table, and in the second table we have twelve into seven. Okay. So ADT calculation is basically just take the total traffic divided by the number of days for which the traffic is taken. Okay, and then you have ADT. So how many, how much we have here? Okay, that's great. I believe this is the value which I got as well. Vehicles per hour. Okay, now I will tell you the next step, and I would appreciate if you come up with the values for the next step in the next class. Okay, so we will save some time. The next step is calculating average of each day. Okay, calculating average of each day. That is very easy. You have four values for Monday, four for Tuesday, four for Wednesday, and so on. Just take the average of the values for each day from this table. OK, so I need an average below every column of the first table. OK, the average for uh, months is slightly complicated. OK, so uh, and it requires less calculations. I will do it myself in the next class. But your task is to calculate. Uh, you know, average of each day of the week. OK, Monday, Tuesday, Monday. and you come up with these values in the next class. OK, so I will stop here. If you have any questions, please let me know. Any questions or queries, please let me know. Test 2 material, uh, lecture 5, 6, and 7. So what we are doing is included. Any other question? OK, you are welcome. Then uh, good. Oh, yeah, sorry. Anyone here who has uh, uh, from whose groups uh, any uh, people have left or anyone here who hasn't uh, made their group yet for the term project? Anyone who is without a group in the term project or anyone uh, who has lost their partner from the term project because they have uh, you know, left a, or left a course or something. Please raise your hand. If you have anyone who is without a group, is there anyone, is there anyone in the class who is, who is without a group? 
uh, from whose group people have left? Please raise your hands. Please raise your hands. Anyone without a group for the term project? Uh, anyone from whose group people have left or dropped the course? Please raise your hands. No one? If there anyone like this, you can contact Eamon. Okay, anyone sees this video later on, or if you know a friend from whose group people have left, uh, please contact Eamon Adi Omar. Okay, he is he is alone in the group. Okay. Yes, uh, Hussain, you were saying uh, I got is different than the table on the slides. Okay. Uh, you can show me the calculation later on. Send it to me in a private message. I can look at the calculation. You can show me a sample. I calculate in this manner. I can, uh, I can, I can tell you whether the calculations are correct or not. Numbers, not a problem. Okay, numbers are plus minus. As I said, if there is, uh, and and if there is a difference because of uh, one or two vehicles, it can be because of rounding off. Don't worry about it. If difference is large, then show me the calculation. I can tell you whether the calculations are correct or not. Maybe my calculations were wrong. It can happen. Okay, so I want to see the, see the calculations. Or my values are wrong. It can happen. Okay. Any anything else? Okay, Eman. I will uh, announce in the other section as well. Maybe they are facing some problem, and I will let you know. Okay. Thank you for listening, participating. Have a nice day. See you guys tomorrow, inshallah. Assalamualaikum.